Hey everyone, so today we're going to hear about a man named Anton von Leeuwenhoek, and he is a man who lived 400 years ago, and he made some really important discoveries. We're going to hear about his story today and the discovery that he made. Our vocabulary words that we have today are bacteria. Bacteria are very small microorganisms. They're too small to see, and Anton von Leeuwenhoek was the first one to discover bacteria. So it'll be really interesting to um, hear how he did that. Our next word that we have today is lens. A lens is a curved piece of glass and is used in magnifying glasses and microscopes. Magnify. To magnify something means to make it appear larger than it really is. Observation. Observation is information that you can gather by closely watching someone or watching something. And the word I want you to add to your vocabulary books today is microscope. Microscope is a magnifying instrument, and not an instrument like you would play music with, but a tool, a magnifying tool used for viewing very small, tiny things. Well, hey, Nick Neutri. Hi, boys and girls. Last time we were together, I said that I would tell you about Anton von Leeuwenhoek today. Well, I plan to do that, but first, I want to tell you a story about me. When I was about your age, one day my father came home with a present for me under his arm. When I first opened it, I wasn't sure what it was. It looked like this. Do you know what this is called or what this does? My father explained that it was a microscope. That was nothing I had ever dreamed of wanting. I spent most of my time playing outside and could barely sit still or read a book. Why on earth would I want this funny looking instrument? You were so curious about everything, I thought perhaps you'd like to see what a butterfly wing looks like up close, my father said. So I peered through the lens of the microscope, and I saw the tiny veins and hairs of a butterfly's wing. I looked at insect eyes and blades of grass. I looked at oak leaves and dead bumblebees and toy soldiers. It was the best present I had ever received. Have you ever used a magnifying glass? What's a magnifying glass used for? It magnifies objects. It makes objects look hundreds of times larger than they really are. It shows things that are too small to see without the human eye alone. Sometimes people use magnifying glasses to read really small print or to find splinters buried deep in the skin. Well, a microscope is a lot like that, but a whole lot better. So what does all of that have to do with Anton von Leeuwenhoek? Well, just like me, at seven years old, the year I received my first microscope, Anton was very curious. He also had a fascination with magnifying objects. Although Anton was not a scientist, his work with microscopes changed the way people thought about the human body and how it works. At 16, Anton began working in the textile business. His shop sold cloth, buttons, sewing supplies, ribbons, and lace. His customers were very particular, expecting the very best textiles or cloth for their suits and dresses. Anton used a magnifying glass to make sure the threads of cloth were straight and tightly woven. His customers appreciated Anton's careful observations. When he was about 30 years old, Anton took a trip from his home in Holland to nearby England. There he discovered a book called Micrographia, meaning small images. Written by Robert Hoke, the book was full of drawings and descriptions of objects seen through a microscope. Anton was fascinated by how large and detailed the micro, or small, objects looked when seen through the lens of a microscope. It was a little like someone with poor eyesight putting on eyeglass lenses for the very first time and discovering that the blurry tree they saw in the distance was actually made of individual leaves. He couldn't wait to get home and experiment with his own object. Upon his return to Holland, Anton began to build his own single lens microscopes. He shaped his lenses very carefully, grinding them down with sand and polishing them smooth with putty. Anton's simple microscopes magnified objects from 50 to 200 times their natural size. Anton had been interested in science and nature ever since he was a boy, and now he had the opportunity to study nature at a much closer range. He carried squiggly worm-like insect larvae around in his pocket, eager to watch the entire life cycles of insects with the aid of a microscope. Using the microscopes he made himself, he studied people's skin, 
mosquito wings, sheep hairs. He observed duck hearts, fish scales, cow eyes, water bugs. What a strange man, others thought. But this patient man was driven by his curiosity, and he wanted to learn more. He never lost interest in the scales on a gnat's wing or the hairs on a fly. He looked at the same things again and again, comparing, measuring, and recording his findings. Anton conducted many experiments with water, drinking water from his well, water from the lakes and the sea, the rain, and melted snow. He discovered what looked like tiny little animals in the lake water. He called these little animals animalcules. Anton claimed he saw even more animalcules swimming about in rainwater. They were everywhere, he said. He estimated that 1,000 of these tiny creatures could fit on the head of a pin. People called him a liar and a magician, thinking he was quite mad. But in fact, Anton was not mad at all. His little animals were not really animals, but were definitely alive. He was the first person to observe and describe many living things in nature, not visible with the naked eye, including bacteria or germs. Many scientists believe that these tiny life forms have been on Earth for more than three billion years. They surround us in air, water, and land, but no one was even aware of their existence before Anton recorded what he saw. He discovered a whole new world. Ever curious, Anton began studying the saliva from inside his mouth. He discovered even more bacteria. He would found the sticky coating on the outside of his teeth was crawling with millions of tiny organisms. You have them too, but don't worry, they won't hurt you. We'll learn more about them on another day. Anton kept a journal to record his detailed observations. He made friends with two English doctors who belonged to England's Royal Society of London. They told him that their fellow English scientists kept similar journals to share their scientific discoveries, and they invited Anton to share his work with them. And so, for the next 50 years, Anton sent hundreds of letters to England. His letters described in great detail the tiny structures that he saw through his homemade microscope. He described fungus on stale bread, the stingers, eyes, and mouths of bees, even tiny lice. Because he could not draw well, Anton had to hire someone to illustrate his writing. The English Society loved everything he sent and published his letters for everyone to read. Anton von Leeuwenhoek did not invent the microscope, nor was he the first to use one, but he used his own simple microscope more than most people of his day. Compared to modern microscopes, like the one that you see here in the picture, Anton's was very simple. It was even more simple than other microscopes. The entire instrument was only three to four inches long and had to be held up close to the eye. Anton's microscope used only one lens, whereas modern microscopes have two or more lenses, one in the eyepiece that you look through, and at least one lens at the bottom of the tube or the barrel to enlarge things even more. Today, objects are put on glass slides to be viewed. These objects remain in one place. It's the lens that moves and not the objects. Instead of keeping the objects in one place, Anton mounted his objects on the end of the sharp pointed pin sticking up in front of the lens. Do you see that in the picture? And he moved the objects instead of the lens. Anton's invention required good lighting and great patience to use. His lenses were the clearest and the most powerful lenses of his day. But he never shared a secret for creating them. No one came close to matching the quality of Anton von Leeuwenhoek's microscopes for more than 100 years after his death. Of the four to 500 microscopes that Anton is believed to have made, no more than nine exist today. Hey everyone, me again. Anton is one of my heroes because he was the first person to describe bacteria, tiny living things not visible with the naked eye. And his discovery of bacteria made it possible to see other small living things, such as the small building blocks of life on Earth. As a nutritionist, I am fascinated by how the human body works and the tiny building blocks that make up the human body. The next time we meet, I look forward to teaching you about the amazing bodies, amazing building blocks.